going to swap out this water heater for this water heater and I'll show you why. I don't know if you can see that, but back in there, if you see that rod, that little silver piece of metal and the golden piece of metal are supposed to be touching each other. Shouldn't be a gap in there. Yeah, see, right there at that little piece. So, let's replace it. All right, so first thing I'm gonna have to do is shut the water off to the rain barrels so the incoming water will stop. So let me take off. Now see this I actually prepared so it wouldn't freeze. Just forgot to do the heater inside. Oh, I don't know. Why is that all wet? So there's one. Oh, the other one goes this way. There's a grasshopper in there. All right. So now the water is off. You just place all that in back in there for now. So it's out of the way. All right, so after cutting this first clamp off, I thought of something. I'm probably going to have to replace this whole tube and this section here as the new water heater is uh, a little bit longer than this one. I might get away with it, I, we'll see. So, for ease of getting these parts off that I'm probably, these uh, fittings I'm gonna most likely need again, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this off, let it drain out, whatever's in there, and cut this one off, let it drain out. What's in the pipe? That's basically the water that's front. Well, that's actually, see, that's what I should have drained out of the hot water heater uh, prior to the freeze. So next time I'll know that, uh, remove the water sources and the drain plug. All right, so now, it'll be a lot easier to remove these pieces and these fittings once I can take the whole heater off the wall and out of this confined area. So let's go ahead, I'll get after that now. All right, so if you don't have one of these amazing tools, so a little 90 degree for your drill, I thoroughly recommend it. If you're doing any kind of cabinetry work or just anything where you want to get in a tight space like this, this thing is fantastic. Yeah, I would have been struggling with that. Sweet. Thanks for jumping out of the way. All right, so now we got them bottom two screws off. I should be able to just pop it off of here. I don't know how tight this top bolt is. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Sweet. All right. All right, so unfortunately, the new one, like I said, is a little longer. So it's most likely this is going to have to move down. Or maybe this one, I'll probably, maybe I'll just move this one up a little bit. That might be easier to do and I know that these holes aren't going to line up so I'm going to have to redo those I think this one actually only has one hole one screw hole on the top and two on the bottom so let's get into that this is the quote-unquote owner's manual and installation guide this thing is garbage 
So, yeah, it talks about the features. Gives you, um, I don't know, two of the exact same diagrams. I don't know. Some about high pressure, low pressure. I don't really know what that means. Uh, here's your installation instructions. That's it. Talking about your location, where you're going to put it. Doesn't tell you anything about how to screw the pieces on or what kind of fittings you'll need or, you know, the distance between the bolts or, you know, screw holes. So I have to figure that out. Yeah, good times. And that's that's really it. Got some precautions, some operating instructions. Yeah, maintenance. Uh-huh. Good thing, though, is it must be installed installed that's two separate words there by the way uh by a qualified authorized technician maybe they needed a qualified authorized technician to uh proofread this but anyways so this is what we do with that all right back to it all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and measure this and let's see the distance so if we can get about to the middle of that down to here it's about 22 and a half inches Let's say I want 22 and a half there. And then I'll go to about the middle of that. So I'll move this guy up about two inches. And that should be good. Maybe two and a half. So before I move it, I'm going to go ahead and mark where I want it to be. So like I said, about two, two and a half inches. I'll go two and a quarter. We'll split the difference. So that'll be right there. I'm in the way. Ooh. All right. Love that. I don't know if you can see it but i've marked right there that's about uh should be about the center oh you can't see it the center of where it used to be because these were um evenly spaced so if i do that there hopefully that will line up down here to uh, move to the water pipes so like i said since this only has oops, sorry one hole i'm gonna go ahead and put that guy right there see down here got that so they lined up pretty good about the center of this two by four like I wanted now and that's hot water and cold water inlet so oh no that's gas all right so hot water right cha see that hot water hot water cold water and then that's our gas over there all right now we'll go take the fittings off the old one. So I'm not entirely sure yet till I get these off, which ones I'll need, but most likely I'm gonna need them. I don't believe I need the gas one cause the new water heater actually came with the, um, the right fitting right on there that screws right on, but I'll take it off anyways, just to be safe. All right, let's see how. Maybe that did come on there. That may have came on there. Like I said, I don't need to take that off, so I'm not going to take it off. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this plastic. Now I may cut here, you could probably heat it, I don't know. But what you wanna be careful with is when you are cutting this, you wanna be very careful just to try to cut the plastic and not nick the metal, because of course, you know, water, if it finds a hole, it's gonna get through it. So you don't wanna nick all the way down and then risk the chance of the water being able to squirt out of there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get at that and I'll be right back. All right, so we got the pieces off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get them fixed on here and then probably go measure the length that I'll need prior to installing the um, PEX pipe because I think it'll be a lot easier to get the PEX pipe on here and then just connect it inside than it would be like I did it last time, having the PEX pipe trying to wiggle it and get it clamped up here in that tight space. So let's uh, let's do that. So here's our cold side. And see, this was the weird part about the other one too. I don't know if you can see it and I don't know why they do this. Let me get you in for a closer look. But if you, oops, sorry. If you see here, the length of this one versus this one, this is where I believe I had the hardest time with the leaks because that's kind of short. So I don't know why they do that, but they do. So, and actually that's the gas inlet over there. But look at the difference with the hot water outlet. Look at the size of that. I mean, you could fit a whole hose on that versus this tiny little piece right chaw. So that's kind of weird, but whatever. All right. So earlier when I was talking crap about the book, because the book did not explain anything about this. But if I were to guess, and I think I'm going to try it, it fits. I mean, that's got the stuff that you can put a PEX pipe right on and it screws onto the water inlet, which may be why that one is shorter like that. The other one didn't come with that little thing. I kind of like it. I'm still gonna put some tape on there, even though there's a gasket in there. So let's do that now. All right, so the key with the thread tape is you wanna go in the same direction that you're gonna spin so it doesn't back the tape off. So since we're spinning that direction, we wanna wrap in that direction. So once we rip the end piece, it's facing the same direction so it won't back it off. And we're gonna, you don't wanna get it on the edge. Try to stay away from that last little thread and we're gonna wrap it, I don't know, about five times. See if we can stay away from the edge. Yeah. Ah! Let's take some knack, especially when they're in this small area like this. Stop spinning. Although it is spinning away from that front thread, which is nice. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. So this is like three. I'm gonna keep it nice and tight there. All right. I don't know, that's either, that might be four, that might be five, whatever. Either way. So now we're gonna take, when we get it over there, and I'll take, and what I like to do is push it into the threads real nice. So can you see that there? Hold on, let me get you close. So see that tape is into the threads there, and then it's away from this first little lip right here. That way it doesn't fold over and, you know, get in there and kind of impede the flow of the water. Now we'll put this in our little rubber gasket. that I hope that's what that's for it's really nice actually and since this is the coal water side that's fine it's, that it's a, a black rubber gasket and not one of the I think it's red usually for the hot water and I kind of like that it's gonna make it a lot easier 
Well, I mean, I guess it's the same. You either got this thread or you got this thread. So hopefully with those bumps, we'll see. Cause usually the PEX has these, these more defined rings. So we'll see if it doesn't work, we'll back it off and I'll put this ginormous piece on, which should work. Take our thread tape. And we're gonna do the same thing. Since we're spinning this way, we're gonna wrap that way. All right, so we do the same thing. Nice spin around, get it into the threads. Now, let's take it inside and see how long we need to make the PEX pipe for these guys. So it looks like the cold water, I'm gonna go ahead, be able to go ahead and move it right up there and put that back. Ooh, I don't know, that's really loose. I don't know if that's going to work. The hot water, on the other hand, I'm gonna have to cut another piece because, yeah, that ain't. About three and three quarter inches. So let me go cut that, I'll be right back. All right, so again, before I bring it back in here and try to hook it up, I have to cut this piece off and get it off of the elbow here so I can connect right there to it. Let's go ahead and get up in here. Break that off, pull this off, out of the way, and then I gotta get that off. All right, so I got that in here, got it all on, got that piece off. So make sure, before you try to connect it, make sure you got your ring already in place. And that'll be the same for the hot side. Let's go ahead and slide it on. And then I will come back and of course, put this where I want it to be once you know i'll tighten it down to it here let's see all right so there's one the hot side on let's hmm i have to slide you guys over a little bit can you still see can you guys see it all right all right there's the hot side out. Let's do the cold side in. And let's all hope that this works correctly. I may have to screw it into place first. All right. All right, so I got it screwed into place there. Oh, hold on, let me adjust you. There, how's that? No, how's that? All right. So hopefully now when I push up, it won't move. So this should make it a little easier, hopefully. I don't know. I can't see what I'm doing. All right, I don't know. It seems to move really easily. I don't know, let's see. I'll go ahead and turn the water on and see what happens. Wait, I gotta go turn it on outside first. I got my water catchment plan, pan in place. I'll go ahead and turn the water on and see what happens. I hear it filling. And I hear it spraying out the back, but nothing's spraying here. It might be in business. We'll see what happens once I put, let me turn this off. We'll see what happens once I put the nozzle on on the inside because then there'll be pressure coming back. So this is where the shower head goes and the other one had a quick disconnect. But since the new one does not, I'm gonna have to put a little elbow right here and then a, a little on off valve as well before I can put the uh, shower head on. So let's do that part. All right, so what I'm doing now 
is to go from the elbow coming out of the hotline to where I need to install the shower head, I have to put this, you know, little male to male connector or maybe female to female. I don't know what, which, which one it'll be. It's going into female, but it's a double male. So this side will have to go, or this fitting goes on this side and then I'll have a pex and an elbow down, then a little pex, then a shut off, then a pex and then a connector. Oh gosh, it's gonna be good times. All right, so that's gonna go on there. Let me get that on and then I'll thread tape this side and that will go in the actual shower and I'll show you that in just a second. All right, so here is the elbow where the hot comes out. Well, actually it's, a, it's really both hot and cold. Just depends on how high you got the hot on. I guess yeah because there is no separate so we'll put that one on there I'll put a little piece of pex then I'm gonna put an elbow then another little piece of pex <sighs> then a shut off valve then another little piece of pex then this thing so that way the shower head can screw into this Man, be this would have been so much easier because as you can see, this screws on to this fitting, which would screw on to the fitting that comes out of the elbow. But since this guy only has adjustments and doesn't have an on off switch like the old one, that's why I have to go through all this just to install an on off valve. Good times. Got our piece of pipe here. I'm gonna kind of flex her up a little bit. So really, I just need it big enough for the elbow to fit this piece on and to fit the other piece on. So really, that's all this first little part needs to be. So you see that? I'm going to go check. I'll come right back. That's about as long as it needs to be. Because you can see, really, it just needs to be long enough for these pieces to go, you know, a little bit in the middle, whatever, just to give you room to crimp would be about right. So we're going to make two more pieces just like that to go here and then here. All right, so here's all the little pieces. Whoops. That will go on there. So now let's go ahead and get it all crimped together. All right, so since this plastic piece right here, the gray part is actually bigger than the PEX pipes, that did not work. When I clamped it, clamped it down, it actually broke this. That's the first time I've seen that happen. So I'll have to go back to how I usually connect it with one of these guys. Let's go ahead and install our crazy contraption and then we can test the water on the other side. All right, so I got it closed. Let's go over and test the water.